Hi, I'm Colin from DMP. In this product video, we will show you the initial setup of the IDW500 Passport photo printing system, as well as some helpful tips on using the system. The IDW500 system consists of a few components. The ID photo printer and ID photo print media, the IDW processor console, its AC adapter, and the special Wi-Fi SD card for the camera. The ID camera used to capture the subject's image and the rechargeable batteries for the camera. It takes 20 to 30 minutes to set up the equipment the very first time and only a few minutes to restart the system each day. The processor console is supplied with an AC adapter and the special Wi-Fi SD card that goes into the camera. The printer AC power cord plugs into the rear of the printer and a wall outlet. The ID printer is connected to the processor console by a USB cable the USB cable must be plugged into the bottom USB port on the rear of the console. Note, the other USB ports of the processor console are not used for normal operations. The other end of the USB cable is plugged in the printer USB port. The printer power switch is located right next to the power in USB cable ports. The console comes with a SD Wi-Fi card for the camera that is paired to the processor console. The card is inserted in the bottom slot of the camera near the batteries. Then insert the rechargeable batteries into the camera. If your system comes with two sets of rechargeable batteries, leave one set in the charger and switch them when the camera batteries get low. Now, Powering up the system for day-to-day -day operations. It's very important to note there's a specific order when powering up the system. It's simple as one, two, three. Always turn on the printer first, the IDW processor console second, and the camera last. One, power up the printer. Load the print media if it's not already loaded. When the printer is ready, proceed to the next step. Two, power up the processor console. Power button is on the right side. Note. The console is like a cell phone. You must hold the power button in for a few seconds for it to start. You'll see a red light on the side of the console when it starts and the logo will appear on the console screen. The console will take about three minutes to complete startup and be ready. The display will show the progress of the boot up process. When the IDW booting completes, it'll print a power on, self test, post printout. This indicates the processor and printer are working correctly. The third step is to power on the camera. You can shoot images right away, but the Wi-Fi will take about 20 seconds to complete the synchronization. When it's synced, you'll hear the console audible tone and visual message camera found on the console screen. The system is now ready to use. For more details, refer to the included installation instructions. Thanks for watching. The printer for the IDW500 uses special ID print media. The carton contains a roll of paper and the spools of photo ink ribbons, enough for 350 prints in each set. Tip: Have the printer powered on when installing or replacing the print pack so the printer will initialize properly. Begin by opening the printer front door using the latch handle on the top front of the printer. Squeeze the handle to unlatch and open the door toward you all the way. Remove the spent ribbon from the printer and set aside. Remove the paper spools from the printer. Remove the spools from the paper and set them aside for reuse. Place the new paper roll on the spools. Ensure the spools are tight against the paper roll. Place the paper spool into the printer with the tail coming over the top towards the front. Thread the paper into the printer between the bracket bar and silver roller as indicated by the label. Continue to feed the paper towards the front until the printer beeps. Next, place the ribbon spools into the cradles. The left side of the ribbon core is inserted first. It is spring loaded. Then the right side snaps into place. Install the lower one first and repeat for the upper yellow ended take up core. Note the yellow end goes into the yellow cradle. Complete by rotating the upper ribbon spool to take up any slack. Close the front door firmly. 
The printer will then initialize and eject five blank sheets of paper. The printer will show only the green power light when it completes initializing successfully and it's ready for printing. The console will show the printer status and report the print's remaining count on the display. Thanks for watching. Prepare the shooting area. For a good photo, it's important to have the right lighting conditions. Soft, bright light, evenly illuminating the subject is best. Use a good non-reflective white screen or backdrop that is wide enough it doesn't appear in the camera LCD display. A white wall will suffice if it has a flat, non-glossy finish. The camera image capture results will vary if the guidelines are not followed. Avoid harsh light from any angle. For example, sunlight on one side of the face will cause shadows. For dimly lit shooting areas, the camera flash can be used. Note, the camera flash can also be set to enable the red eye reduction. Turn it off when it's not needed. Shooting the photo. Now, set the subject for the photo shoot. Place the subject close to the backdrop. Instruct them to hold their head up and look into the lens. Stand back with the camera about six feet from the subject. And with the camera lens level with the subject's eyes, double check the lighting. Use the flash if necessary. Use the camera zoom to get the proper head size inside the LCD guide. And press the shutter button slow and steady to take the photo. Once the photo is taken, you're ready to transfer it to the IDW console. Press the play button on the camera back. The image will appear on the LCD. Take a quick look to confirm it looks good, it's sized right, and the eyes are open. Press the menu button, then press the navigation ring, top or bottom, to scroll through the menu until you reach DPOF. Now press the center select button to set the digital print flag. Note, the DPOF flag then appears on the LCD to the left of the image. Once DPOF is set, press the play button to exit play and go back to camera mode. This will allow the system to automatically clear the DPOF print flag. The image will be transferred to the console and processed for printing. Messages will appear on the console as it processes the image, and it will appear in the console screen once it's done. The ID photo will auto print if all the various biometric tracks are green or green and yellow. You're ready for your next customer. Editing the image. If the image needs to be edited or if the image file needs to be exported to USB, press the image thumbnail on the console screen and follow the prompts. To resize the image in the edit mode, you simply pinch zoom on the console touchscreen to make it bigger and to reposition it between the head and chin bars. Press accept to continue and print the image. The edit workflow allows you to reprint the image or to export the file to a USB memory device. The buttons appear on the print confirm screen. For more info on this topic, refer to the user guide. Shut down the system. Lastly, for this video segment, to power down the system, do it in reverse order. Camera off, console off second, and the printer off last. Be sure to use the shutdown button of the console to properly shut it down. Press the gear icon and then the shutdown button. Tips on operation. A word on camera settings. For most subjects, the intelligent auto mode of the camera will auto adjust for a good image capture. However, when taking photos of subjects with very dark complexions, the camera will perform better in program mode and using spot metering. A word on lighting. Soft but bright natural lighting is ideal. Windows and sunlight should be avoided to prevent shadows. Window shades are helpful to control it. Auxiliary lighting will help to overcome some lighting conditions. Photo fill lamps on both sides of the subject at head level will fill the subject with light to avoid shadows. The camera flash may also be used. Test in your environment to find the ideal lighting conditions. The camera also has a red eye reduction setting in the menu Use this as necessary and return to off for normal operations. Hi, I'm Colin. In this video, we'll cover the topics related to the camera SD Wi-Fi card not transferring the images to the IDW console and the steps to correct it. If a problem should arise where the images won't transfer to the processing console, the camera Wi-Fi card may need to be reseated or repaired. You can recover and restore the files on it with a DMP SD recovery utility for the system. But before using the SD recovery utility, try the simple fix. 
On some occasions, the SD card in the camera may not be seated and won't transfer any images. This can happen when changing the batteries, for example. To correct this situation, simply open the battery compartment and reseat the SD card. The card has a push-push latch. Push to release it and push again to seat the card. Close the battery cover and power up the camera. See that the console recognizes the camera after the usual Wi-Fi startup delay of about 15 to 20 seconds. The camera found sound and message will appear on the console screen. Now we'll demonstrate the IDW SD Recovery Utility. The SD Recovery Utility will restore the files to the SD Wi-Fi card needed for the system to communicate with each other. It will also set the system ID on the SD card that pairs the two together. Both steps need to be performed first the repair and then the set ID function. Note, if you do the first step, you must do the second step too. Download the SD Recovery Utility from the DMP website. It's a free download. Using the utility is simple. Open the utility and insert the SD card into the PC or laptop SD slot. In case your computer does not have a built-in SD card reader, you can use a supplied adapter. Start the utility and the two recovery options will appear, Repair and Set. Click on Repair the SD card. Use the drop-down box to select the drive where the SD card is located. Select the drive letter for the SD card. In this case, the drive letter is E. Then click the Restore button. Click Yes to allow the utility to run on the PC. Click Enter to start the format procedure for the SD card. Click Enter again and the format process begins. It will wipe away any old files and images on the card. As the format process completes, it will add the necessary files to the SD card. Click OK to end the process. The program returns to its home dialog box. Now the second step is to set the card to have the matching ID to the console. The console ID can be easily found on the PowerUp post printout. On the console screen in the top right corner, be sure to only enter the last two digits of the ID in the example, it is 39. Don't enter the whole name such as ID photo underscore 39. The program adds a prefix automatically. Click set and it's done. Notice the name ID photo underscore 39 matches with the post printout on the console screen. Hint, if you make a mistake, just use the set function again. You don't have to restore it again first. Click the OK button to finish click exit button to the end of the program. Then eject the SD card using the OS eject function. Now remove the SD card from the PC slot and reinsert into the camera. Power on the camera and the camera found message will be seen on the console in about 15 to 20 seconds. Shoot a photo and send it to the console to test the repair. Hi, I'm Colin from DMP. The IDW500 is designed to be easy to use and reliable for many years. There are some simple things you can do to keep the system running smoothly. Some daily chores are to clear off the camera card of the images taken throughout the day. This is an easy chore to perform at the end of the day when shutting down. When deleting the old images on the H300 camera, it's usually easier to delete the entire image folder in the camera. Here are the steps. Go to play mode, scroll down the toolbox icon, Press the center select button. Scroll down to the folder management section. Select the delete rec folder and click OK. You could also use the trash can icon on the camera's back panel. Press the trash can icon. Scroll to delete all photos on this date. Doing this daily will clear all the images for the day. If images remain from a previous date, repeat the previous steps until all the images are gone. Next for housekeeping is to clear the images remaining in the image gallery of the console. Press the gear icon on the screen. Then press the clear image button and the images will be cleared. And while on this page, you can shut down the system by pressing the shut down button. Now for a few operation tips. When waking up the camera after sleep, it will take about 20 seconds for the console to reconnect and the camera found message to appear. You don't need to wait for the camera found on the console to take a picture. Shoot right away. Always be sure the camera is set for 5 MB, 4x3 file size. Changing the size to a larger setting will not improve the image quality, but will slow the system processing. Typically, it takes a few seconds for the image to transfer to the console once the digital print flag or DPOF is set for the image, and about a minute for the image processing to complete. Then the image will appear on the display in the image gallery and or auto print depending on how the configuration is set and the biometric result for the image. The printing will take about 15 seconds.
A few more tech tips. During a photo session, you will notice that the consoles will inform you of the steps along the way. The IDW console will make sounds and provides visual messages. For best operation, swap the camera batteries when they become half drained. Don't wait until they are completely drained. Print media changes. There are 350 sheets in a media set. The paper and ribbon are changed together as a set each time. There will always be a little paper remaining. Simply discard it and install the new rolls together. Always leave the printer turned on when changing the paper so you can hear the paper load beep and it can initialize correctly, finishing with the outer layer of sheets getting cut off after the door is closed. There's also a separate step-by-step -step video on print media loading. Going back to the topic of camera images for a moment, if there are some images that won't delete, they may simply have image protect enabled. You'll see a little key symbol on the camera display for the image. This can occur if the protect is selected instead of the DPOF. They are right next to one another on the menu screen. The protect flag can easily be cleared. In the play mode, bring up the image and using the menu, click protect to unprotect it. Then it can be deleted. Thanks for watching.